morning. You're welcome to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Rume Paulson. And I am Nyamgul Agaji. We're so glad to know that you're there and you've been able to join us. Let's have breakfast together this morning. Yes, you made it this morning. <laughs> yeah. It's the 18th of July, 2024. Yeah, it's not a small feat, you know. When you said you made it this morning, I just remembered yesterday I lost a, a cousin to cancer Aww. and she had recovered, you know. And um, you came back? And it just. All of a sudden, it, she just uh, gave up. Uh, mm. That's how life is. You never Very know. fickle. Yes. Death is death. Sickness is sickness. That's what I always say. So you cannot say, because I'm not sick, I cannot die. Or because I'm sick, I must die. Mm -hmm. uh, when the time comes, it comes. So uh, you made it to this you day. Made it and this morning. we should have every cause to glorify God. Be grateful. God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Be grateful for life. All right. On today's breakfast show, we have a lot in store for you. We'll be discussing several hot topics, and we'll also be taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies. But first, let's check out our quote of the day. Innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower, and that is why Steve Jobs, he was the founder of Apple, and he says, this morning, innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. So if you're innovative, you know that you have the capability of leading. Mm -hmm. And we should also know that leading is not only leading from the front. Sometimes mm -hmm. you can lead from behind. There are people who pull the strings and make things work in mm -hmm. some organizations or in some families. So you don't have to be the one who is taking the credit, mm -hmm. but you're the, the one who, are, who is making the sure. Brain yes, behind. the brain behind everything that is happening. So uh, you have to choose whether you're a leader or a follower. But mm -hmm. whatever you are, be a good one. Mm -hmm. be because it's important that you're also a good follower. Mm -hmm. Some people are just not capable of... Um, you know, using a lot of the percentage when it comes to your brain to say, I want to think of this or I want to be able to do that. But then when someone brings up, brings up the idea, they're able to follow and say, you know what, we're going to execute it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this for you. But that thinking might not just be your thing. And it's okay. It's okay to help other people. That's mm -hmm. why collaboration is important. Yeah. So it's important that we have a leader and a follower because if there are no followers, then uh, <laughs> yeah. who are you going to be leading? Yes. And then if you're just the follower and you don't have anybody to lead you, you're, you might just be headless. <laughs> who are you following? <laughs> exactly. Whatever. So it's important whichever side of the divide you fall into. But always remember that you can innovate something and lead people. And also you can be a follower who is following that big idea. Mm -hmm. So innovation just distinguishes between, you know, it shows you where you are on the side. And wherever mindset. you are, know that you can lead. It's not uh, when you become a governor or a chairman before you say you are in a leadership position. Mm -hmm. You are in your family. You are among your friends. You mm -hmm. are among uh, people that look to you for guidance. So mm -hmm. you have to step into that shoe and make sure that you think mm -hmm. further than everybody else. Yeah, and I also like to say innovation doesn't always have to be technology mm -hmm. because when we hear innovation, yeah. we always want to think, oh, it's technology and stuff. But it, it might just be having a better idea to some system and process. Mm. So it could even be in your organization, if you see that there is a loophole or there is something that is lacking and you say, oh, you know what? I think it's better if we do it this way. I have a better system for this. That's also innovation. You've just innovated a new yeah. way of doing things. Thinking new, mm -hmm. thinking outside the box. Exactly. Thinking as if there is no box even. Yes. <laughs> There's an innovation, that's it. Exactly. Mm. All right, let's move over to some top trending stories. This first one says Tinubu seeks injection of, well, some amounts into 2024 budgets. And what is this amount? 33.7 trillion. President Bola Tinubu has asked the Senate to approve additional um, 33.7 trillion naira for the budget. The request includes 3.2 trillion consolidated revenue fund for expenditure and another 3 trillion um, addition recurrent expenditure. Tinubu also seeks to amend the Act of 2023 to impose a windfall tax banks and outline um, all of this. The Senate has listed these executive bills for consideration in the plenary session. All right, so we have more money. <laughs> Are you calling it more money? Uh, we're just asking for 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 more money to spend, and mm -hmm. the excuse is a minimum wage. Well, it's understandable, but mm -hmm. I'm just wondering how he sent um, uh, a bill to the National Assembly for more money that he's hoping to also use for the minimum wage when he doesn't even know the amount he's going to pay as minimum wage. Mm -hmm. Because this is one of the 
things they said that they will need the money for the uh, recurrent expenditure mm -hmm. and all that. So you don't know the amount if it's going to be a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand, and you have sent a bill already. So if at the end of the day, uh, labor and and the government agree on an amount that cannot be covered by this this money he's requesting for, does it mean? That is going back to the Senate again for another supplementary yeah. budget. Like we're so, when, up to when like do we even cut now. it? When do we cut it? Do we have to say for every time we think we just need more money, then we have to ask for more money? How do we? As, how do like, we ensure like, that our, we our have that yeah? Money because there. we don't even have so much. And how do we ensure that you know the revenue that we have, we're actually using it judiciously? Because it's one that thing one to... we're not. Just, just forget about <laughs> that one. But the thing is, I, I it's feel... It's one thing to even I, say that... I feel they should have exhausted everything and arrived All options, at... All options. Yeah, yeah, arrived at uh, a, an amount that mm -hmm. they're going to pay. And then you can you can do your calculations and go mm -hmm. go meet the National Assembly, except he wants to dictate to the National uh, to Labour mm -hmm. and say, this is what you must take. Mm -hmm. And I have done my calculations and all that, which is not democratic. At all. Know. So, exactly. But, well, let's see how it goes. I hope that there's a figure that will be acceptable by Labour mm -hmm. and also... And we can just government. call this a day. It's been too long. Mm. It's well, been too long. Well, there's still a threat that they might go on... on on another strike, pressure, another strike, another strike yeah, for action. one month. Okay, uh, the Social Democratic Party supports a planned nationwide uh, protest against economic hardship, in a, emphasizing the importance of the conduct of the of the protest. SDP National Chairman Chehu stated that the protest is in the interest of the masses and called for civil security agencies. Imo State Governor Hope Uzodima defended President Bola Tinubu's economic challenges. Uh, to well, a civil society organization also led by Yusuf urged for dialogue and engagement with the government and uh, and saying that the protest is not supposed to hold. Okay, well, some people are saying that they are going to hold a protest because of the hardship and mm -hmm. all that. Yeah, um, my only fear is that sometimes protests snowball into something that we may not be able to handle mm -hmm. and. Uh, there's also this accusation that sometimes the people who are injected into the protest are injected into the system yeah. by the politicians yeah, themselves so that they will now make it look like, okay, it's, uh, these people are committing crime when they're mm -hmm. supposed to be doing something peaceful and all that. But whatever it is, whether the politicians introduce these people into the protest or other criminals just take advantage of the protest, I fear protests sometimes in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But at some point... It will be inevitable. So I personally do not even like protests because I feel like it's it just makes people n not be as productive as they want to in that time whereby where the protest is going on. For instance, when there's a protest, there are several organizations that are not going to be making money. So the revenue that you're even expecting to get, you might not get it. So that's why I don't really like protests. And I remember when I was younger, when they would say, oh, NLC is going on strike. You have to stock up food. There's the whole panic buying. There's just a lot of um, emotional hardship that even comes with it, aside the physical one that you're saying, okay, we're protesting um, for a better future. But it is still important that we make our voices heard. Mm -hmm. And I just hope that we never really get to that point where we have to keep protesting. Like, why can't we just say something and say, this is what we want, and then the government listen to us? It's as simple as that. Simple. It's not rocket science. Simple. We don't have to go into the streets, carry placards, protest before you finally hear what we have to say no you can we can still make our voices heard you do the right thing you do what is necessary because at the end of the day you should be thinking of the welfare of nigerians so if you're not even doing that that means you're not doing your job you are lacking behind mm. and why do you even want to fail why are you setting yourself up for failure it is important that you're saying okay i want to be a governor i want to be a president i want to be a senator and i want to be successful at what i'm doing yeah, well, success is defined differently in Nigeria. A lot mm. of words are defined differently in Nigeria, by the way. <laughs> so what works, what definition works everywhere else may not work in Nigeria. So mm. uh, to go into politics uh, and you're saying, I want to serve the people. I want to serve the people is like, say, I'll, I want to serve you breakfast, which also <laughs> means something else in yeah, Nigeria. Yeah, I'm still serving you. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, however know. you choose to see it, yes, I'm still serving you. Serving you. you yeah. So I don't know. But... We will get to that point one day. Just that I pray that it should be in my time so that I know that if I'm going to meet, meet my fathers, I know 
if there is life after death, I can tell them that there was something yeah. significant yeah. that happened before, before I left. I, before and I, then I'll look I my this. children in the eye and say, okay, I'm living a better world for you. Yeah. That's, that's all we're crying for. Exactly. Why can't it start now? Yeah. We have all the resources. We have uh, the, the human capital. We have the whatever God has given we to us. We have natural and I think, We have money. I think we, have we, we take the blessings of God for granted. granted. We are just exactly. like the Israelites that we're talking directly to God, hmm. but we're still misbehaving. That's what we're doing. We have everything, but we're just misbehaving. Mm. It's terrible. Well... Our final top trending story, local government autonomy will expose governor's incompetences and unproductiveness. Ajadi Adigboiga, a former governorship candidate in Oyo State, praised the Supreme Court's verdict granting financial autonomy to local governments, stating it would reveal the incompetence of some state governors. He emphasized that this autonomy will push governors to develop independent plans and reduce reliance on federal allocations, particularly highlighting the importance of agricultural investment. Ajadi argued against the uniform minimum wage across states, citing varying economic capabilities and revenue streams among different regions. He urged Nigerian youths to support the government and engage in nation building positively, while also calling for the establishment of a price monitoring structure to address food inflation and scarcity. I think I can, I can agree with this a little bit because, you know, when you look at the local government, they're the ones that are closer to the people, not even the state government or the federal government. And most times when you say, oh, our road is bad, we don't have light. The first person you want to speak to is your local government chairman, is your councillor, the wards, right? That's where you go to and you um, lay your complaints. Because before, be before you can really reach a governor, it's, it might be a little bit difficult. And imagine if everybody from different local governments are all coming to the governor at the same time. He's going to be bamboozled. He's going to Nobody have will so go much. To the governor. Exactly. You see, you, so it's, you're not even reachable. But I feel like with the local government chairman, you can lay your complaints to your local government chairman. And so the development of that area, you know, is, is on the onus of the local government chairman to ensure that that is being done. So if you were looking at development, I think this is a better way to go. We know the chairman's house. We know his family house. We know his father's mm. house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I guess person. you would be afraid that uh, if you don't do well mm -hmm. one day, it might come back to haunt you. Except you want to pack your entire family and go and stay somewhere else. But, you know, all I'm praying for is rebellion. Don't get me wrong. Mm. Because every governor now is trying to conduct election. Mm. And they are going to put their stooges there. Mm -hmm. we, we know that. But I... I pray for a situation where there will be pockets of people who would say, you know what, even though you put me here, I have the interest of my people at heart. Mm -hmm. Because if they are going to stone us, it is going it's to be... Me. It's, it's me. that is you. Stone, not you. Because <laughs> it's me that they know. You they might, know my you house. might come from a place that they've never been to, but mm -hmm. me, they know my house. They exactly. know everything about me. So yeah. I will do what my people uh, want me to do. I know there will still be some percentages going mm -hmm. to, the, to the state. That's why they're setting up committees. I don't know why they're setting up committees, whether they, they will have to share revenue or the, mm -hmm. I don't know what the committees will be talking about. But I know or I pray that these local government chairmen should be yes members until they get into office and do the right thing when they get there. Mm -hmm. Because uh, truth be told, there will be handpicked by mm -hmm. these governors that mm -hmm. want to also have sway, help, hold sway in all the local governments. But mm -hmm. every once in a while, we'll have someone like that one of Ogun State, I think, the other time, who complained that the governor was not giving them their entitlements. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they shut him down. All the other account, uh, chairmen and the councillors and everything, mm -hmm. they sat together, and I think he was removed. Yeah. But if he had total control of his own money, mm -hmm. they couldn't have done that. Yeah, because all, all you're asking him to do is remit some money. Mm -hmm. And honestly, we need to get to that point where there is no corruption. That's the only way oh, we can no. grow. Oh, that's El Dorado. We're not going oh, to get there. But at least we should get to a place where people will love their country enough to know that enough to even if you're stealing, yeah. you're stealing, you're stealing and still living. Please what? do not steal. They will mm -mm. steal. They will steal. Do not. See, it's, do you know that? Have you seen how much our politicians earn? They earn a lot of money. So why are you still going there to steal? I'm salary. Like, that's what I call It's just like the it. other one that we allegedly were hearing he has taken 80 billion. How long are you going to spend that? 
You've paid your children's school fees up front. It's not even only yeah. politicians. You heard of the, was it Accountant General of the Federation of, at one point that took about 120 billion? What are you doing with well, 120 that billion? What and are there are people who are suffering. The people in your villages, they, they, you have neighbors that probably cannot even send their kids to school. And this money is for everybody. It's not just for one person. It's not your entitlement. You're not to go there <laughs> and just steal money. No, there are still, there are still people who can have integrity. Nigeria, there are still people who can go. Yeah, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> I was just singing. There are still that? people who can you know, get into office and decide that I want to be a good person. I want to be you know, do the job I'm, I've been asked to do without being corrupt. It is possible. You shouldn't go there trying to steal. You shouldn't go there trying to say, okay, you know what? I want to uh, elevate my, my, my pockets. I want to see this as a poverty alleviation scheme. That is not what it is for. There are people, I want to believe that there are people who have integrity in Nigeria, no yes. matter what anybody's going I to tell I know that, me. and I know, so I know some of them. Just go to, just go there. Make sure you do your job. Do what is right for your conscience. But you see that where the problem is. Um, they say every leader comes from among the people. Mm -hmm. I know of a long time ago a story of um, a local government chairman that I know personally. He went into the council with a beetle. He had a beetle mm -hmm. uh, then. So he was a school principal and then he was uh, taken into the council. He went there and at the weekend he will come back home to the village. He will go into the bush to hunt, just mm -hmm. like every normal person. Mm -hmm. And he did what he had to do as a chairman. When he came out, he still had his beetle. He mm -hmm. didn't have a new car, he didn't have a new house because yeah, of the of the thing and all that. You know what? When when he resigned, he left money, billions, in the coffers of the local government. The next chairman that went just went Squandered. and cleared everything and said there was no money there. And then his own people, the chairman who, who left, mm. who had integrity, his own people were now calling him names. Yeah, that he was, see, You're a fool. You, you went yes. into the council with a beetle and you came back with a beetle and hunting game with it. us like, like any other man. You don't have sense. Well, imagine, imagine so our, our if the creation. next person goes there, the next person will want to have sense. You will want to steal. You will want to, to change your life, get better like, cars. Like so we cause it. I, a lot of the times we cause it. I, you steal money, you come back, and you are given chief tenancy titles. Mm. And the person who is a man of integrity may not ever be invited to mm -hmm. the community meeting. Yeah. So Do you know what I think we need? I think they should just gather all Nigerians together. <laughs> hmm? And flog us. Do, after <laughs> flogging us, after flogging us, they'll put, you know, those wires somewhere in your, in your temples, yeah. right? Then there will be a reset. <laughs> whereby your brain would not even think of anything when it comes to oh, corruption, God. anything when it comes to um, crime, anything when, like, we'll just, have, we'll human. We'll just have a, a better society. You'll be a vegetable. You won't oh. be a human any, anymore. Free, free will is there and everything. But, but I think we should start this orientation from, mm -hmm. from, from the cradle as it is. Yeah. When we were growing up, we were singing the national anthem around the Nigerian flag, for instance, mm -hmm. and it told us that there was something greater than us that we needed to respect. And then we we're singing the songs, marching and all, doing all those sorts of things. When the way they were teaching us, even back home, our parents were modeling us, you know, after you know, doctors, engineers, people with careers, people mm -hmm. who can now... Parents are buying laptops for their children to do Yahoo. They're taking them to, the, to ritualists sad. then. They're, they're modeling children after people who have made billions. Mm. You don't care and you how, even know the source. You don't care how they made the billions. Mm. So how is our society going to be better? So we should start this orientation. And, and the, the religious people are not doing us any, any there better. There are some pastors you can go to with your money and he'll pray for you. They, they're, just, they're just at the altar talking prosperity. Yeah. If you are not rich enough, you, it, it's a curse. Mm -hmm. like, like, okay, how do I become rich? If let's say I'm earning a hundred thousand and I'm trying to make an honest living, I want to send my children to a public school because I cannot afford it and all that. And, and then you're telling me that, is my, that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a curse. You know, my family is cursed. So I want to, to break, break the away. yoke. Yeah, poverty. break the yoke. Some people are, the, I hear now, some pastors are even selling uh, water. Mm -hmm. that, uh, this oil. water is uh, breakthrough water. Oh this other goodness. one is protection water. It, it, you can imagine. We need to. We just need that reset, whereby we're doing what is right, and it doesn't matter 
where you are. It doesn't have to be a politician, even in your little corners, even in the job that you do on a daily, just have integrity. That's that's it. Bottom line, yeah. Yeah, that's it. All right, we'll go on a short break. We'll look at the weather. When we return, we'll be in the papers. Please stay with us.